Hi, everybody. This is Martin Patella for Life Enthusiast, and with me today, Dr. Cass Ingram, D.O. Please take note, D.O., not just some kind of an M.D. Dr. Ingram, welcome. Yes, it's great to be here, and it's, great, it's a great life to be an osteopathic physician and to have had professors who said you should take some lemons and squeeze them and put them in your water. You should uh, use black Russian radish. You should, you know, consume uh, uh, dandelion when it's in the spring. And, you know, some old school stuff that I got in my training that you'd never hear in an American medical school. So, Well, the uh, first thing that comes to me is the uh, preventive model of let's find the cause as opposed to let's whack about the symptoms. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So osteopathy prepared me for that. And that led me to the wild oregano when I stumbled upon that and with a chronic illness myself, a chronic viral illness and some fungal overload, some candida, pretty severe candida at that point. And uh, yeah, I'm trying all sorts of things and IV and chelation, different things, trying to get my health rebooted. You take something from the wild mountains of the Mediterranean as an extract, uh, steam distilled extract from wild plants growing in the mountain tops, and and you get cured, you know, so it kind of gets your attention. Yes. So at that point, I became quite permeatingly, sophisticatedly involved with anything botanical, anything in the woods, the boreal forest in Canada, Peru, Africa, nor in the Mediterranean, what is out there that's effective. And the most effective thing I found went actually turned to be the oregano extract, wild oregano extract, uh, which is a kind of a bona fide purge in and of itself. So and, you know, do you know much about the wild oregano? I mean, what it is? Well, I've used it, you know, like your, one of your products, Rosmano, saved my tush 15 years ago, I used to suffer with horrendous allergies springtime. I mean, my, my own story is uh, mercury poisoning, liver problems, allergy ah. problems, uh, well, rapid aging, stuff like that. Yeah. And so back when, when I was just totally debilitated, I, I just walked into the store and found this rosemary essential oil by North American Herb and Spice, which today it's called Rosmanol. And uh, I was taking like 12, 15 drops straight up in juice to... It straightened you right up, didn't it? Oh, totally. Kept, kept me out of uh, wanting to gouge my eyes out because of the itching that the uh, springtime allergies would bring on. Wow. But That's so I, I detoxed myself since and the, all of that stuff subsided. Like I've been able to... Well, live you right wondered now. yourself, didn't you, when you found something that efficacious that... What is this? Uh, yes. Blasting us out. So the king seems to be the wild oregano oil. And nice in Canada, you should have available the P73 or internationally, what have you, web. Uh, P73, which is a, an edible type of wild oregano that is 100% wild, never cloned, never farm raised, never messed with. And because it's a wild spice, you can consume it as much as you want. Mm -hmm. so that could come in handy if a person had allergies and they wanted to take a few drops every day as a prevention, or if you had fungal infestation, which usually sets up the, the baseline for allergy. You might have a person with candida, right? And so mm -hmm. they might need, they might have mold, they may have a dry cough, a lot of that going around. They may have some chest congestion, bronchitis, and they, sinusitis, it's all fungal. So the idea, the oil of wild oregano, the P73, you could take it every day. Right on. You could take large amounts, too, if you have to. Mm -hmm. So you started saying something about purge versus eliminate, detox. I mean, these days, everybody in California is doing detoxes, but they, they just think that having an extra poop a day. Cayenne and a maple detox, syrup. Right? And look, um, and or some extra green juice, which is good. But when I think of purge, I don't think of eliminating a large stool per se, though that can be part of it. Purge means to purge disease processes or to purge those extreme toxic elements that destabilize the body. And so that purge means to purge out the fungus, which is a huge cause of destabilization of the human being. 
Allergy comes on because the fungus is there. Cardiovascular disease because the fungus is there. Cancer because the fungus is there. There's, you know, there are other al uh, diabetes. Is the diabetes first, the blood sugar first, or the fungus first, and then the blood sugar? So, so, so I think of purge. I think of the oil of oregano as a purge. In yes. fact, the Bible, Old Testament, I'm not the expert there. I'm an expert in the wild oregano. says, purge yourself with a hyssop so that you'll be well and cured and, and fine. Well, what's hyssop? It's from Esau in Hebrew, which means wild oregano. So, so purge means to kill the pathogens. Okay. Yes. On one hand, the oil of oregano to kill the fungus, the mold, the, 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 the deep-seated bacteria, the, the Lyme spirochetes, the, the tick-borne diseases, the intracellular viruses, the vaccine overload viruses, kill them out. You're going to be well. You, you, you like, like you when you had your allergies. You take the essential oil, you knock it down, you, 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 you get you well. Uh, purge yeah. also means what are you going to do about the parasites? Not, I'm not worried about, I mean, we, we want to get the good elimination, but the bigger problem to me is when somebody has a big load of worms or tapeworm or roundworm or pinworm or amoeba, I mean, that could lead to carcinoma or flukes. Yeah. It could be serious pancreatic diseases serious uh, diabetes kind of, so i want to see how we could so that's the total body purge and these these parasites will not be enjoying the environment set off by the uh, what, do, what do we call them alkaloids terpenes whatnots that are uh, in the uh, alkaloids terpenes uh, monoterpenes exactly the benz benz benzo like uh, you know the carvacrol thymol right which are the simple phenolic compounds. But here's the interesting caveat. Your oil of oregano is geared by our creator as an obvious antifungal. It melts mold spores. It kills brown mold, black mold, green penicillium mold, rust molds. It kills candida. So obviously it's got that profile. It's also antibacterial, antiviral. Mm -hmm. But when you're dealing with tapeworm or flukes, these are bigger organisms, roundworms, and the oregano is not the perfect purge for parasites. So a lot of people say, well, I'm taking the oil of oregano. I said, look, you've got a load of worms. You've got purplish red discoloration under the corner of your eyes. You're ravenously hungry. You're gnawing your fingers. You're bruxism at night and you're losing weight and you don't have a good appetite or you have a ravenous appetite and you wake up at two or three in the morning staring at the ceiling the worms are kind of cooking up in the morning you get cuckoo at the full moon your kids have an itchy butt i mean come on you got a load of worms so i mean the purge may not be the ideal thing for a four-year-old simply because the taste is you know but if an adult can do it teenager it's the ideal thing it's got the burdock the wild dandelion, the wild dandelion roots. So you're working on that element. And then you have the rosemary, your cumin, your, it doesn't, it's not an oregano based product, actually. It's all these other components, cilantro, mm -hmm. black seed oil. And so that's what that is. Now it's the odyssey of it is because you're increasing the glutathione production in the liver and the catalase and the superoxidismatase and also in the kidneys. You end up purging a lot more than parasites. You end up cleaning out toxins. Mm -hmm. But through a different mechanism, you're getting the body and the bile and the enzymes to, to, to uh, detoxify the chemicals so they can be thrown out. Right on. You know, okay. If you want to take your fiber with that and all that, that's fine. But this is not a master cleanse or a super cleanse. This is a purge. Yeah. So how would a person best use it? Is it like a one bottle of it in once a year? I had a guy whose hair turned from white to yellow to black after he took it for two months. Well, maybe I should try. <laughs> I had <laughs> I had a guy, nothing personal there. Uh, I like the maturity. Uh, I had a guy, a woman, several women who lost like you know how some women have that beach ball on the front of their abdomen? Yes. They lost it. it took about 90 days. So how do you use it? You want to use it as a way to get in perfect health? Or do you want to use it for a month? Or do you want to use it for two, two to three weeks to kill the worms? 
But sometimes if you're dealing with intestinal flukes, now I'm not trying to make a claim for the company who makes this. I'm not trying to defy the government dictates. I'm telling you just as a doctor, my own personal experience, and I've written books, that with the intestinal flukes, they're like, they have tank treads or something. I mean, they, they don't want to go anywhere but stay where they are, whether it's in the gallbladder or the liver or the base of the lungs or the intestine. Mm -hmm. So you have to root them out. And that's the purge is brilliant for that. If you use the oregano with it, that's just that much better. Uh, so okay. it takes time. Awesome. So I've, I've been also fascinated by the wonderful uh, spice oils, the other ones that you have in the product line. Like they don't seem to leap off at anyone because we don't know about it. But oh, right. I, I'm, I'm looking at the cumin and I'm looking at the uh, yeah. clove and whatever else, right? I mean, they. Yes, they, that's very interesting uh, because that's your, an area you're familiar with, but a lot of people don't know that you can take a spice oil, put it in an extra virgin olive oil base, which North American Herb and Spice invented that whole technology, not just take it as a neat essential oil because that has issues, but to take it in a safe dilution. And then you can take it internally. Uh, but then you have to know that each spice oil has different value. Your cilantro spice oil, like cilantro, for example, has great value for mercury overload. That's well published. It even binds to mercurial compounds. Uh, so heavy metal with cilantro, therefore autism and ADD and ADHD and such. But then you have the cumin, which cumin is very interesting. Cumin with cuminaldehyde is antioxidant, preventing the aging process. Excellent for the skin. And it's a good antifungal. But cuminaldehyde, cuminol, would be really good for cardiovascular support, cardiovascular and brain. That particular phenolic compound blocks the oxidative damage in the brain. Then you have the issue of the rosmanol, rosemary for remembrance, but you found that it's a good antihistamine, which it is. So you have the antihistaminic action, you have the anti-inflammatory with rosmarinic acid, carnosic acid, but it's probably main claim to fame is preventing neurodegeneration in the brain and spinal cord. Uh -huh. So if someone has Alzheimer's, dementia, memory loss, mental alertness problems, uh, concussion injury, stroke injury, paralysis, we want to block that oxidative damage that, uh, or memory issue. You know, we want rosemary for that. And, and then if you have to take exams and if you have to get uh, really acute in your work, you're a driver, you're a long distance haul trucker, then you want your rosemary extract. Right on. And the sage seems to sort of play along in some... The clove is good for parasites, so you could add that to your purge. Uh, sage, we don't talk enough about sage. The Native Americans regard sage very highly, as you know. But I found that the sage extract, known as saginol, which is a sage in the extra virgin olive oil. By the way, this is edible sage. So there's a problem with sage potentially. If it's Dalmatian sage, if it's sage from certain other mountain ranges, it could be too high in thujone. And that may not work too good for someone with sensitivity. But when you're dealing with the mountain tea, you're okay. So this is mountain tea that the villagers make an infusion of, and it's safe for consumption in reasonable amounts. But what I found with the sage, people with hot flashes, uh, women with estrogenic overload, right. and also uh, for the issue of uh, you know, pre-Alzheimer's, Alzheimer, because it's a fat-soluble antioxidant, prevents mm -hmm. the neurodegeneration. And then finally, I found it to be really good for, for the Lyme, Lyme disease. Sage right. is poisonous to the Lyme spiral key. That's impressive. I found it to be helpful broadly in liver issues. So when you're highlighting the uh, estrogen, of course, Estrogen is supposed to get decomposed by the liver. So when the liver is not up to the job, then, of course, you have excess estrogen, hence the hot flash, and so on, right? And that could even in men, too much estrogen, because they have estrogen, uh, could be poisonous. Right. So and women, of course, have developed cirrhotic conditions of the liver from estrogen overload or from birth control pills, which right. damages their livers. So that's a good point that the sage would, and we know from the data that sage, mountain sage, increases the production of glutathione even more than oregano. Right. It'll go into the liver and maybe produce four or 500% increase in glutathione and glutathione S transferase, which helps in the detoxification of estrogen moiety. Right on. Uh, so that's, that's that uh, phase two liver detox 
enhanced right? phase two enhancement uh, and speeding up the p450 enzyme system making it more efficient and right then this catalase increases superoxide dismutase right on so to circle back if i have somebody who's uh, got epstein bar infestation and issues back to oregano right back to oregano back to sage in this case one two punch yes and you would take maybe some super strength oregano oil, maybe some juice of oregano, maybe some sage extract and extra virgin olive oil, and that should be sufficient to get them over the hump of Epstein-Barr. And that's true of other herpetic viruses. Now, we're not trying to commit to a cure for all diseases, I understand that, but you should know that, that the essential oils, which are high in monoterpenes or single terpene molecules or double terpene molecules, have been demonstrated to destroy the viral coat. So yeah. if you strip the viral coat off by melting it with the essential oil, if you know, in other words, if you burn it off, there's no way the virus can grow. Mm -hmm. It's toast. So it doesn't really matter if it's a cold sore or canker sore or herpetic or wart or genital wart or genital herpes. It's indifferent to those. Now, genital herpes, I'm writing a book on, it's more stubborn. Right. But you still want to use your super strength, high strength oregano oil. You want to use maybe some sage. Um, maybe you want to use some propolis. One of the interesting things I've seen on the market now is this propolis, Canadian propolis and wild propolis, that uh, or propolis, which is melted in in, in, the, in the base is oregano oil, and it's called propaheal. Okay. So that gives us yet another potent antiseptic with all the flavonoids that are in the propolis that comes from your poplar butt trees up in Canada. Yes. Up in the, you know, in the United States, northern parts. But the bees don't care. They'll go to any uh, propolis secreting tree and gather that resin. And then they make that as the coating. You know that propolis, they found a beehive and there was a mouse that was completely intact but it was a dead mouse. They coated the mouse in propolis, and the propolis preserved the mouse from degenerating. Indeed, yes. So. Impressive thing. So we kind of skipped over things like cinnamon and, uh, I don't know. Cinnamon, and also, uh, if you think about allspice, these are germicides, but cinnamon has that notorious property of being insulin-like where it mimics insulin, and that makes sense how sweet it is, so that it saves the, the molecule, and may have something to do with uh, sort of a regeneration of the beta islet cells in the pancreas, mm -hmm. and it's been found to cause some neuroregeneration in the brain. So it's working on the brain centers too now, not just the pancreas when it's dealing with the diabetes. Mm -hmm or pre-diabetes. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm speculating, but how would that possibly relate back to the insulin signaling, the insulin resistance of... Because the, the insulin resistance is coming from the brain, too. Hmm. And if you're getting that sweet sensation telling the brain everything's fine, I'm good, my blood sugar's fine, I'm, I don't need to be pumping out so much insulin, you're, you're conserving the pancreas. Uh, so God made, it's I, how I see it, and I know some people believe this or that, but the creator obviously made cinnamon for diabetes. I mean, the stuff, you can just take crazy powdered cheap $2 cinnamon and it drops blood sugar 20%. It can't be just because of the pancreas. It's working on this whole, you know, neurogenic reflex. Right on. Yeah, so, and okay. cumin too. Now, cumin, cumin is very powerful. Uh, in reducing your need for insulin. Uh -huh. If you take like that cumin extract and you just take five drops three times a day, you're not going to need much insulin if you're a diabetic. You've got to work with your doctor, cut that back. Uh, but if you also have a history of diabetes or a history of syndrome X or, or blood sugar problems and you use cumin, it just levels the blood sugar very nicely. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, and so the allspice, you just all mentioned spice, it. All, <laughs> okay, allspice, according to the Cornell University study, it was determined that there were four universal antiseptics. One was garlic, the other was oregano, 
another was onion, and the other was allspice, where they found that they would kill all kind of, every kind of germ, virus, bacteria, many bacteria. Allspice is a potent germicide, but because it's from that sweet spice family, it's also an insulin protector. I like to call them protecting insulin because if your body's constantly forced to make the insulin, it finally will burn out the beta cells. Mm -hmm. So if it's acting as an insulogenic agent, it's mimicking insulin, and that's true of all the sweet spices, then you don't make as much insulin and you're conserving a very uh, damaged tissue. When you think of the refined sugar, the corn syrup, the beet sugar, the even not too bad, but our, we, we, our sweets and fruits and body has to deal with that somehow. Right. I mean, the glycemic index itself, right? Like whatever, any simple starch will convert into glucose starch. faster than anything. Or even than fruit in some ways. So, uh, so I'm a big fan of huge, you know, aggressive use of, in the spice kitchen of sweet spices, clove, nutmeg, cinnamon, allspice. But I, I'm kind of lazy, so I like to take the extract. You know, I put a little cumin all in the food and under the tongue, and I'll take the, I don't really use the allspice much uh, extract, but I'll use quite a lot of the cinnamon. It's called cinnamol. I like using that. And uh, actually, it's all together as well in a supplement called Oregulin for insulin support. So that's an option. We've got everything there, but I, and there might even be some allspice. But what's interesting in that oregulin is there's one more oil that's quite quite fascinating. Comes from Turkey, grows in the mountains about five thousand feet above sea level. A couple more, and that's myrtle. Myrtle is a very powerful uh, anti-glycemic uh, material. Bay leaf is another one, bigger leaf, but bay leaf's claim to fame is, uh, and it's found in some supplements is as a germicide, antifungal, extremely potent. Yeah. Awesome. So that's, you know, and, and, and what kind of oils did we talk about? Spice oils. We didn't talk about esoteric oils from flowers. We talked about things that are food, that you just take a thousand pounds and you distill out the essence. So the profile of safety is not even an issue. Of course it's safe. So... Uh, so one could take advantage of our suggestions without any un untoward effects, actually. Yeah. You have other interesting spices. Fenugreek, which has a testosterone-like action, is also good for women. Uh, you, can, uh, you can look into, uh, for example, fennel. Fennel uh, is available, actually, by the same people we're talking about as phenetrol. Fennel's great for colic. Remember the old colic remedy you used to have up your way? Mm -hmm. uh, so that if someone has irritable spastic colon, diverticular uh, kids and so forth, you can take the edible fennel oil, rub it on the tummy or take it internally for an adult. Even the children can have a bit. But I found fennel uh, in the scientific literature as back as 1800 to be great for hookworm. So it will basically obliterate the hookworm. And, uh, and I use it for any parasitic infection. All right. We'll make, In the purge. We'll make sure we make it available. Yes, it would be good to do, the, like, you know, not too many people have sites or where you see the f edible fennel, then you see the edible cinnamon under the tongue, and you see the edible allspice, and then you go down the list and you see these different individual oils. And people are interested in that, especially, uh, well, I'll give you an example. If you had, for example, oil of myrtle or oil of bay leaf in the olive oil base, what if you had vaginitis? You can't put the oregano oil in there. Or if you had jock itch. So I tell them to take these because these do not have a heat index like that, but they're antifungal. And they could safely use myrtle or bay leaf or sage oil uh, underneath the testicles or inside the vaginal tract uh, or, you know, a little bit and also by mouth. Uh, or on, say, you know, eczema or some psoriasis to, uh, and bay leaf has been used, you know, bay leaf soap and uh, the old uh, old spice for the skin had bay oil in it, but we've lost that, that lore. Right. So well, would... maybe, maybe together we can bring it back. 
<laughs> yeah, let's, let's bring it back with the storm. Individual spice oils, not even essential oils, but from food used as a therapeutic to help the teeming masses of humankind. Fantastic. And don't forget the total body purge. The king is oregano and the queen is the total body purge. One Could you comment on the difference between the uh, triple strength, extra strength versus the regular strength? Yes, the, 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 you're taking the same crude steam distilled wild oregano, but you're using less extra virgin olive oil. You're making a, about 290% stronger by a higher amount of oregano oil per dose. And so it's more aggressive. It's kind of an adult dose. You can give it to the kids, but they don't like the taste too much. Uh, you can rub it on the feet and the shins. It's the best one for topical, up and down the spine. But that super strength you got to have for tough situations, for, for example, chronic troubling circumstances, people who need support for Lyme disease, for candida, for irritable uh, chronic intestinal problems, for the eczema, eczema that's chronic. Mm -hmm. You need to take a stronger amount. So 300% stronger. Now, you will see also, and you could be the first to try to introduce this, now North American has searched the mountaintops because everybody's putting out, oh, my carbon crawl is 85% or 88 or 90, then we measured it with synthetic. Right. Yeah, that's so, an important point, understanding that you can't fake your way with nature. You can't fake your way with nature. and Some of the unscrupulous people are double and triple distilling the oregano to make the carbocrawl higher, even though it originally started at 60, then they pop it up to 70, I mean to 90 and all this. But China is making a lot of carbocrawl that's going in now synthetically. Right. So what we had some top experts who provide North American urban spice with its oil of oregano. So they were tasked to go to the mountaintops and find the pockets of 85%, 84% carbocrawl. And they were able to find it on the mountaintops. So they harvested that, and now they've brought that to the States. It's called Arega Ultra. Arega Ultra is wild 84% carbocrawl. And the carbocrawl uh, is extremely important when it gets to that high density. It's a, it's a great solvent. So, so if a person has a real stubborn situation, they've suffered with Lyme, they've suffered with, and I'm not speaking for the company. No, I'm speaking as a private person at this time. Uh, but if they're suffering with these situations where they have the biofilm, the L form, the mutated, you know, we know about this, the cell wall deficient, the carbocrawl melts that membrane. Or if somebody has the warts, or we talked about the privates when they get hit. So you want that ultra for the tough situations because that high carbocrawl will do the job. Now, carbocrawl is the active ingredient of oregano oil. However, a good quality oregano oil has more than just carbocrawl. It's going to have about 25 to 35 active ingredients. So there is a synergy still. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. I okay. think that's a high note on which I think we could close this tour de force, the spice. <laughs> I could do that. The spice is the answer. Yes, sir. Well said, my friend. And we look forward to you introducing more and more of these wonderful options for the public. Indeed. We are always looking for something that's not available in every store. And, uh, and here well, we are. Individual oils are not. So right. that would be a great way to stimulate local demand for those who wish to take advantage of it. And then also this Arega Ultra. I would definitely make that available to your people. I will do that. that. Save some lives, especially this year with these stubborn flus and such. Awesome. Dr. Ingram, thank you so very much for taking time out of your busy life. And uh, all the best. Peace and love. Love and lot more love. Awesome.